After all that off-season outrage after the shootout between the Chiefs and the Bills, the NFL has decided to change its overtime rules for the postseason only. I mean, if they were smart, they would just go to college overtime rules. Or yes, like Samir recommended yesterday, go to the kicker shootout. Why not? Suspense at an all-time high. Let's see what our panel thinks. So, Reed T. Fowler, Pierce Dietrich, good to have you guys here this morning. Pierce, how are you feeling about the overtime change here? Uh, the overtime change is stupid. Whoa! And every one of the, all these suggestions <laughs> you just made, those are stupid as well. Whoa! It's pretty simple. Just add a fifth quarter. Whoever has the most points at the end of the fifth quarter wins the game. There's, there's not much to it. I, I, just, I don't see why we can't do that. Instead, we're going to add a rule, and then a year later, we've got to add a rule to change the rule that we made in place. And yeah. everybody gets a possession uh, unless they score a touchdown the first time. But then if it's in the postseason, then you do get a possession. What are we doing? Just, just put, I'd rather have ties than have all these dumb oh, God, In you... fact, I would rather – let's just give people L's. If you don't win in regulation – you don't win. You just lost. In the real world, there's no overtime. If you oh. don't get your job done on time, guess what? You get fired. So <laughs> why are we giving second chances and all these opportunities to make up for something that you didn't take care of? Oh, I don't, well, if we lose the coin toss, win in regulation so you don't have to worry about the coin toss. What are we doing? Uh, if we're going to have it. At least just do a fifth quarter. Come on. Reed, what would you prefer? Well, a lot of things are happening in the first two <laughs> minutes of this show. We got we got James McAvoy and Split and the cold open. And thank God cold opens are back because those are fantastic. Thank Kudos you. to everyone behind the scenes and you, Emerson. Second, I am not surprised by the curmudgeon of this show, Pierce Dietrich, saying that <laughs> let's add a fifth quarter. Well, you can't really do that with the CBA because adding a fifth quarter means they're probably going to be wanting to get paid a lot more and they're going to have to go through arbitration. But we know Pierce loves arbitration and loves things to, to get to a point of litigation. So that's one. Number two, Pierce, if you don't win an over, or if you don't win regulation, it's not just because you suck. It's because both teams are actually playing really well. And the reason the impetus for this was the Buffalo Bills and Kansas City Chiefs. So I don't hate it. Now, to Pierce's point, I don't like it because you're just going to keep on changing things until it becomes a, a like a, you know, a, a marginal change at the very end. When does it stop? Because if you take a look historically at the overtime rules specifically, it's changed three times since 2010. That either means that they're listening way more to fans, which is kind of nice, but kind of weird and kind of stupid. Or two, they just didn't have it right to begin with, which is probably the more operative like philosophy or process. The thing is, though, Pierce, that like the teams that since, I believe, 2010, when the like this whole process started to change, Teams that have, that have like won the overtime, their toss, excuse me, are 10 and two in something like that in yeah. terms of, of how good they are of winning the game. So when you have that much of a lean yeah. on one side of, of taking a team, I'm sure it's, I'm sure the numbers are skewed of, of, of like my years and my stats, but when you have so much skewed to one side that if you win the coin toss, then you win the game, there is clearly something wrong. Right. It's the same as if we take anything, if it's skewed on one side, you got to get it back towards the middle. This is all a ploy to to, you know, to get the fans to watch more football. The fifth quarter is garbage because that just means you're going to have a sixth quarter, Pierce, if they try it after the fifth quarter and then a seventh quarter. And then you have you run the same argument that sure to begin with. I like it. But yeah. to, to Pierce's point too much change is maybe not a good thing. Yeah, I mean, you make a good point there with, like, the 10-2 and two record. I mean, Pierce, you, you firmly believe, like, a winner essentially is okay being decided by a coin flip then. No, I said none of that. I said you should lose. We shouldn't even do overtime. So what the hell? So how do you do overtime? Do a fifth quarter. How do you figure out the Chiefs and Bills then? You have a full quarter. What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do if you tie in, in the playoffs then? That's what I'm saying. You're saying both the, guys lose. Someone has to advance. Well, this is the, the, the rules. Oh, that's only easy. It's like hockey when they go to seven, eight overtimes. It's like the greatest moment in the world. Think of all the commercials that you could put into that kind of a contest. Just let it run. Nine quarters of full football, <laughs> last man standing. What are we talking about? That's no, just the cricket, Pierce. We'll have Pierce, three day contests. Pierce, you football. realize you're referencing a sport that also changes its playoffs, its playoff for its format, its overtime format come the playoffs. That's what yeah, the NHL do does. That's do what it the, all the time. Okay, I'm. I'm just saying you're. 
You're contradicting your point when you reference no, what I'm the not. NHL does. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, because the NHL changes its yes, format come I the postseason. This. this is great. You really, I you really do. Guys. So yeah. you're you're saying then regular season overtime in the NFL should be decided by a kicker shootout, and then when you get to the postseason in the NFL, it should just be like the fifth quarter, sixth quarter, seventh quarter. That's what you would want to see. No, I hate shootouts in the regular season. They should play seven, eight, oh overtime god, every okay, night. can't win. We cannot win. Let's get to some other news. Let's put a fantasy spin on some big headlines here, guys. Uh, big news out of New Orleans. This is huge. No, not the Andy Dalton signing as the backup, uh, but the Saints saying they're going to use Taysom Hill primarily at tight end. All right, you see the fantasy value like in that, and how good is this for Jameis Winston's stock, Reed? I'm very interested to see what Pierce is response to this is going to be of of a guy who probably shouldn't have been playing quarterback to begin with now it's tight but going to my point look I, I like i always think a guy like him is going to have right it's going to have Taysom Hill is going to have value as a fantasy entity right as a fantasy investment maybe at the end of your bench because look at what he's done i know i know Sean Payton is not there anymore and he loved a guy like like what he can do right and, and his type of player but look who look who Hill has in front of him. It's Jameis Winston, Ian Book, and Andy Dalton. And I think Blake Bortles, the whispers of the Bort coin, are also in New Orleans. That's the four quarterbacks, right, are, that are ahead of Taysom Hill. I'm pretty sure that if any one of those players either doesn't make the squad, gets hurt, Taysom Hill is going to be in the back of, of Dennis Allen's mind of, we were 7-2 when Taysom Hill was a starter at quarterback right? Wins and losses. That's all these coaches talk about. It doesn't matter what the stats are. It's wins and losses. But for a fantasy purpose, we love the stats. He threw four interceptions against Dallas last year and had 27 DK fantasy points. He had zero touchdowns throwing and two touchdowns on the ground the week uh, after and went 26 DK fantasy points. He should always have a spot at the end of your bench for a season long. For DFS, you, can, you can't really predict it, so it's, it's a moot point. But for season long, put him at the end of your bench because at some point, Taysom Hill is going to be in that conversation again. All right, Pierce, why make this move and what's the fantasy impact of it? Yeah, I'm with Reed. I think ultimately when things shake out, he's going to end up playing quarterback. That's his strength, quarterback, receiver, running back. He's you know, a jack of all trades, kind of like myself and Reed. Reed's an <laughs> NFL expert, golf expert, and a surfing expert. Now, yeah. if, if Reed just focused on surfing, I don't think it would work out for him. But because he's a jack of all trades, that's where his value is. It's the same thing with Taysom Hill. That's what works for him. You can use him in a lot of different options. You know, we saw Tebow try to make this move late in his career. Didn't work. Maybe if Tebow would have done it early on, it yes. would work. Yes. Hill's 31 years old. He's pretty, you know, long in the teeth as well. So I don't know if he's going to be able to make this. We never really talk about how good of a route runner he is or pass blocker he is. He never really was a receiver all that much. Now he's only going to catch passes. I just I don't see this working. Uh, keep using him in the way that he was. Uh, some of those games last season, he was banged up. He also didn't have anybody to pass to. He threw all those picks against Dallas. Dallas was known for interceptions. He's going to work his way back into the mix, whether it's based on his own merit or by Winston just being pure Winston. So uh, yeah. don't give up on it just yet. And, you know, Bill Belichick tried to get Tebow to change position. So maybe had he done that earlier, <laughs> might have had him actual longer NFL career. Um, when Urban Meyer came in the picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, that was a debacle. Yeah. We, don't have to, we don't have to open okay. up that can, buddy. Okay. We want to have a good day. All right, the 49ers have not been able to unload Jimmy G. So with him still on the roster, Kyle Shanahan is refusing to say that Trey Lance will 100% be the starter next season. Listen to this, guys. Shanahan saying, we brought Trey here to be that eventually. And I think that will, will be sooner rather than later. But when Jimmy G gets his surgery and we can't upgrade our team by getting some good picks until people feel good about that surgery, I'm all right with that. We're not just getting rid of him to get rid of him, end quote. So who is buying that? Pierce, are you buying it? Yeah, I mean, apparently GMs across the league dislike Jimmy G as much as Steve Buchanan, and no one wants him. <laughs> so they, San Francisco doesn't have any choice. They've, they've got to keep him maybe on draft night. Maybe you know, an opportunity will present itself to make a trade, but there's not a lot of teams that really need a quarterback or, or at least see Jimmy G as an upgrade worth trading picks for. Carolina's not going to do it. Houston's not going to do it. Seattle's not going to do it. And I don't even know if San Francisco would trade him to Seattle. I, I just don't see where he can go. So they're just going to have to keep him. But the, the optimistic look is that, and this is not good for other teams, 
But when spring or when preseason comes along and mini camps happen, inevitably a quarterback will get hurt. Yep. And that's when San Francisco can try to trade into a desperate team. But for the next six months, they're probably sitting on them. All right, Reed. I mean, I know G- GM John Lynch said uh, no scenario. He sees no scenario in which Garoppolo is just going to be released. Yeah, it's 25 and a half mil, right? Like as a, as a dead cap. Yeah. I mean, they can cut him, right? So they don't have to pay that. But like that's that that's something that, you know, this is how I take it, Emerson. And I don't know if, if Pierce is a golf guy, but you know this. You buy new clubs, right, in the winter season, mm. right? And you, you you pay a lot of money for those new yeah. clubs. And you had your old clubs, your pings. If you're Samir, you like your clubs, <laughs> right? If you're Emerson, you like your your previous pings or tailor-mades, whatever. But then you get the new tailor-mades. Then you get the stealth driver, right? And you paid a lot of money for it. When it comes season of golf, you're not going to leave those hanging just – just because, right, because you like your old clubs, because you had some success, you're going to be using them. So Trey Lance is a starter. That's for one. He's going to be the starter week one. They paid so much money, you got to follow the money. Number two, exactly like Pierce mentioned, we saw this in 2016 with Sam Bradford when he was with the Eagles, and they drafted Carson Wentz second overall, is that they couldn't really do anything with Sam Bradford until another team, right, I think the Minnesota Vikings, lost their quarterback. That's when Teddy Bridgewater had that freak injury and then Sam Bradford became their court and they got a lot for him, right? The Eagles did. So that's probably what San Francisco is doing. Well, let's not get it twisted, right? Trey Lance is going to be the start of week one. They paid a lot of money and they're going to want to see that return on investment.